Hello everybody, my name is Axe Factor, and welcome back to some Battlefield 4. And if you enjoy this video or want to see some more Battlefield 4 on the channel, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And today, we're playing some Night Ops Rush Defense after taking quite a bit of time off of Battlefield 4. Live stream it the last couple days and had a blast. And there's some changes that I've made. First off, you're going to notice my hand is just a little bit more sexy than normal. That is the Dice Camo, and I've actually had this since the day that Jack Fraze launched his video. Pretty funny story, we actually went through the whole process, live stream for six to eight hours, on and off, had a ton of community interaction, it was an absolute blast, and we got really far on the Easter egg. We actually got to the point where we were working on popping the last keypad by the water tower, and I had to go shopping with Mrs. X Factor, because who could say no to a Costco trip? Seriously. When you're out of monsters, you got to do what you got to do. Came back, Jack had launched his video because they'd had it figured out for well over a day. And they were kind enough to let the community go through a discovery process. The emotional roller coaster, the ups and the downs, the, oh my God, I think I found something, and you found nothing. Or, at that moment of despair, when you think you found nothing, somebody comes through with something clutch and puts you onto the next step. So we're using the dice camera. Another thing that I've equipped is actually the dice friends dog tag. Thank you guys. Thank you to the community and thank you for all the supporters and people that have been with me, not just in Battlefield 4, but for a very long time. I was finally awarded the Battlefield 4 dice friends dog tag. Most of you guys remember I got it in Battlefield 3. Now I've received it in Battlefield 4. A big thank you guys. So if you guys knife me in Battlefield 4, you get a copy of that doge tag and it's pretty sweet looking so we've got the dice camo we've got that and another change that i've made is i went to the small med pack allows me to be more mobile throw a couple down so that i basically start soaking up the healing as soon as i step on it the second i take damage but don't forget if you take one little nick of damage that basically cancels out the healing process and you have to throw another one down so i like to throw two down at a time if i think i'm safe and away we go. So usually at this point in Zavad, when they get that set, we're done here. Absolutely done. But somehow our team actually makes it impossible to push. Because usually when they're this inundated in the area, saturated downstairs, upstairs, lobbing the sandwiches from up top, and anything else that goes boom, you're in trouble. And it's so dark in here, I can't even see. And I'm getting stuck lunging on things that I don't even know exist. So still not looking real good. The word of advice is always flank a dank. That's it. When you're getting pinned, go for a flank. So we're gonna go back downstairs because I don't know what's going on. And whenever you see a bunch of dead bodies like this, usually there's people still hanging around. And usually situations like that, I'll actually keep my gun in my hand, right? Because I can't kill anybody without my gun in my hand. So getting used to these small med packs, this is actually the first round I used them and I really like them. Now, what did I give up? My area effect bag, the big bag. It's not the fastest of healing. It takes a while to get going. It doesn't heal through suppression cancels through suppression but it does kill groups of people remember area of effect and I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this small bag thing but I do try to throw it out more than one I try to get two out so if anybody runs by if they see it on the mini map they can pick it up and away they go it's nice it's more mobile it seems to be quicker in some situations and again not affected by suppression so now let's talk about the dice camel really quickly number one it's extremely unique and it's actually pretty cool there's actually a function of it that a lot of people have talked about uh that may be a quote unquote feature also known as a bug you actually don't show up in the flur or the irnv and i thought night maps night ops were gonna be rife with flur users really only saw one or two in the rounds that we played and more than likely that's because of the smoke adjustment the floor and iron v simply cannot see through smoke anymore so you can still be seen very easily especially if you're on a ridge or the top of the hill <laughs> and of course you have that background gray behind you or just basically the skybox of course when you're shooting and the last thing i want to use is a flash hider not that that helps all that much in night mass because it messes up your shot a little bit flash hider used to be this thing that did nothing to your shot it was a net positive it would hide your flash for the most part and it wouldn't increase recoil or spread deviation or any other negative connotation words but it does have negative connotation now so you don't want to use that so of course your laser sight whether it's red or green or the tri beam laser thingy so you gotta be careful when using laser sights so whenever you're looking at your target within a 30 degree view or so they're gonna be able to pick up that laser with a 
differentiating you know view of intensity based on your angle so it's important to turn that off in long angles but i do turn it on when i'm getting up close and personal and i want a stronger hip fire so i can dance all day and here you see another example of me getting out some of the small bags as i'm trying to figure out as i've leveled up my perks all the way how many can i have out is it three is it four? Do they start disappearing once I throw more than two or three down? And again, it's nice just to be able to put them on your back track, right? When you're going to play undercover, to soak one up. Maybe not on your body when you're playing cover because the second you take damage, it cancels that 10 tick heal. But the second you take a step or two back, you're starting that healing process. So we survive the mid push, which is really tough. And out here is kind of like no man's land. This is definitely tough to play at Zavad daytime. But at nighttime, it doesn't seem as bad because people are kind of pushing mid. You can see them all over the mini map and more than likely somebody's rocking a map because that is simply way too much stuff lit up. So hats off to that person really helping us out. And maybe that's what tank. helped turn the that. tide is that MAV usage and that big push. Remember, running to the flag or the objectives in a linear, straight fashion is usually the worst thing you could do. <laughs> you just get stuck in crossfire just like this. Imagine if our team gets set up on both sides. I'm on this side, we got a couple people starting to push the other side. The enemy team would simply go no. It doesn't matter if you're attacking or defending. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this Battlefield 4 footage. If you did, don't forget about the old thumbs up. And thank you again for all of the community support. The oh, Dice Friends oh, dog tag in Battlefield 4, just like Battlefield 3. We could not do this without you guys. Thank you again, and we'll see you soon.